Dr. Mann, the, uh, the, the Mississippi River is now having problems uh, because, the, because of drought in the Midwest. Uh, the river levels were going down to the point where barge traffic was uh, interfered with. Uh, here on the, in, the, in the Pacific Northwest, the Columbia seems, uh, I, you know, it, we're not in a crisis yet. We are in a drought crisis, the whole region. Um, the Columbia seems like it's in good shape, but it is, it does appear to be, uh, you know, I've lived on and off here for uh, 15 years or thereabouts, and it does seem like it's lower than normal. Um, uh, around the world, this sort of thing is happening. We heard about barge traffic in, in, on the Thames and, and on the, on the, uh, the Rhine, you know, in, in the, the UK and in Germany, um, on the Seine in France. Um, what in the developed world, I, you know, I realize in the in the, in the developing world, it's, this is like a, a screaming crisis, you know, with like as you said, a third of Pakistan underwater or half of Pakistan. But in the developed world, it's really starting to bite. Is that is is it your sense that that sort of thing is starting to wake people up, or is it your sense that the response to that is well, we can figure out a way around this, particularly when it comes to things like you know nuclear power plants having to go offline. This is happening, yeah. I believe, in France because they can't get enough cooling water from the rivers. Yeah, yeah and I was there in Europe when that was happening this summer. Um, uh, what we're seeing is feast or famine when it comes to rainfall and drought, which is to say climate change counterintuitively gives us both more extreme flooding events because the atmosphere is warmer. So if the conditions are conducive to producing rainfall, we get more of it. Um, if conditions are conducive to producing snowfall, we get more of it um, in individual events. And so uh, we're seeing that. But at the same time, uh, we see a longer and longer dry season in the summer in extra tropical regions, North America, Europe, um, Australia, uh, around the world. And so we're seeing both worsened drought, worsened summer drought, lower river levels, for example, that are impacting, uh, as you allude to, uh, you know, uh, transportation um, on, on river systems. Uh, climate change in many ways, and this is one example, is starting to interrupt our distribution uh, you know, our uh, systems and our supply chains. Um, and so, you know, when we talk about things like inflation and rising prices, in part that's driven by, you know, supply chain disruptions that in turn are driven by uh, climate change impacts. So all of this is happening. Um, it's impacting us in our everyday lives. And I think because of that, uh, it has become far more tangible. The climate crisis is no longer you know, this sort of theoretical abstract problem about polar bears in the Arctic. It's about consequences that we're feeling now in our daily lives. And, and because of that, the people get it. There's overwhelming support among the American people and people around the world for meaningful climate progress. The problem is too many of our politicians are still in the hip pocket of polluters of the fossil fuel industry. And rather than doing the bidding of the people they're supposed to represent, are simply acting as rubber stamps for the fossil fuel industry. And that's where, you know, ultimately this comes down to politics. This comes down to individuals putting pressure on politicians through voting and through using your voice in every possible way to force them to do what's right for us.